Welcome back to WMNF's Midpoint Monday. I'm Sean Canan. On Thursday, President Biden signed the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill called the American Rescue Plan. You may have already gotten your $1,400 stimulus deposited into your bank account. Other provisions will provide additional unemployment insurance and health insurance assistance. Joining us now to talk about the American Rescue Plan is Tampa area Democratic Congress member Kathy Castor. Thanks so much for coming back on WMNF today. Sean, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you being here. Uh, so let's start out with the individual stimulus pay payments. What can people expect? Well, uh, thankfully, President Biden followed through with his promise uh, to um, keep that $1,400 stimulus payment on track. Uh, the $600 at the end of the year, that was a down payment. Uh, many of my GOP colleagues did not want to do any more than that, but we know that so many of our neighbors are still trying to stabilize their lives due to COVID-19 and the economic turmoil it wrought. So yes, some of those payments are arriving in bank accounts already. It will be very important that uh, folks file their tax returns. Uh, tomorrow night at, uh, well, tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, I'm having a telephone town hall with the tax taxpayer advocate who can answer uh, direct questions. Uh, if you go to irs.gov and uh, wh where's my payment or find my payment, uh, they will have some descriptions for you. But if you run into red tape, please call my office. We have a very, very good track record on helping our neighbors follow through to receive those economic impact payments, or as I call them, those survival payments. Our guest is Kathy Castor, Democratic member of Congress. And I, I want to ask about health insurance. How can people, um, how are people getting help through health insurance from the this rescue plan? Yeah, is there anything more important during a public health crisis in a pandemic than having access to a doctor and ensuring that it's affordable? The problem is here in Florida, uh, because uh, Republicans have been in charge in the governor's mansion and in the state legislature for so long. Florida remains one of just a handful of states that has not expanded uh, health services under Medicaid to, we, we estimate, almost a million Floridians who do not have that. Um, that means that we're leaving enormous sums of our tax dollars up in Washington. We're in essence subsidizing other states and their health care. Uh, hospitals, doctors, other providers sure could use uh, those monies, but fundamentally, so many of our neighbors need access to affordable health care. So under the American Rescue Plan, what President Biden and the Congress has done is uh, build on the Affordable Care Act through very important new measures. One, an expanded special enrollment period. The Trump administration was very skimpy on when you could go into healthcare.gov and sign up for health insurance. The Biden administration recognizing that we're in a public health emergency now has, expand, has extended a new special enrollment period into May. So it's if you need help uh, figuring out what your options are, go to healthcare.gov and you'll be able to compare and shop around. Another important provision in the American Rescue Plan is it provides new tax credits, makes it much more affordable for families that are working class and middle class. Uh, new tax credits for, for families that earn well over $50,000 where health care could take a big bite out of your budget. It also, the American Rescue Plan also provides a payment for COBRA if you lost your job but uh, want to continue your health insurance under that previous employer. There is now uh, a some help uh, that will help you pay the COBRA that can be very expensive. We also provided a huge new incentive to the state of Florida to expand Medicaid. Um, so we all need to press our representatives in Tallahassee to, to go ahead and do that, bring our tax dollars back home and help us take care of our neighbors. Our guest is Congress member Kathy Castor. We're talking about the American Rescue Plan on WMNF's Midpoint Monday. I'm Sean Canan. It is 1234 in the afternoon and the stimulus bill ex extends unemployment benefits. So what can Floridians expect when it comes to expanded unemployment benefits under this new law? 
Yeah, the American Rescue Plan puts money into the pockets of our neighbors in a number of different ways. So in addition to the $1,400 per person, uh, we extended uh, unemployment through September to a, so an additional $300 on top of the very skimpy Florida benefit of uh, $275 max. But remember the, the federal benefit is available to, to gig workers and the self-employed, whereas uh, previous unemployment did, did not cover that. But Sean, it really highlights the importance of those survival payments, the $1,400 survival payment, because Florida's unemployment system was a disaster for, for people who were really through no fault of their own lost their job due to COVID. So thankfully those survival payments are hitting bank accounts. And you know, for a family of four, that could mean up to about $5,600 because those payments all go to the kids as well. And then when you add on the additional new help of the child tax credit, or maybe uh, if you're a childless adult, but working uh, the earned income tax credit, this is a sea change from where the GOP had us in, in um, instead giving all the benefits to the wealthiest in the country through tax cuts. Thankfully for a change and with President Biden, working people and families are being invested in rather than millionaires and billionaires. I want to talk a little bit more about that expanded child tax credit. This morning, you spoke to reporters about that tax credit that's included in the American Rescue Plan. What are the specifics? What, how do you have to apply to it? Do you only get it if, as a tax refund? How do families get access to this child tax credit? Yeah, this is a historic opportunity to lift millions of children out of poverty across America. Uh, and here in Tampa, Hillsborough County, we're a younger community and out of the about 850,000 people I represent, about 256,000 of them are children under the age of 18. So families can, uh, they apply for the child tax credit when they file their taxes. Uh, you indicate how many children you have, what your income is, and the current tax credit is $2,000 per child. The American Rescue Plan, we increase that to $3,000 per child and $3,600 for a child under six. Uh, we need to make it permanent. This is just uh, for one year, but we are fully intent on doing that. Uh, this is a lifeline to families who are struggling to get through the day and making um, all sorts of difficult decisions on whether to buy food or pay the rent or their electric bill. So in addition to this very significant child tax credit, we provide additional food assistance, rental assistance, um, housing assistance for our neighbors in need because we want to bounce back and build a more sustainable future for everybody. And it's our way of addressing the rampant income inequality in America that we see it's too prevalent here in the Tampa Bay area as well. And some of the funds from this Recovery Act, this, this uh, American Rescue Plan, they're going directly to cities and counties in our area. They'll just have cash that they can use to, to give to people in need in, in, in certain types of programs like rent assistance or mortgage assistance? Yeah, Hillsborough County has been a wonderful partner with their CARES Act money. They implemented a rapid recovery and relief initiative that helped people pay their utility bill, help them with rental payments. That's very important for the landlords too that have you can't just have a, a moratorium on evictions without helping landlords maintain those properties and those units. So the, a lot of that rental assistance will continue to flow to, to make sure folks have a safe place to live. We have a real housing squeeze in, in the Tampa Bay area. People have discovered uh, paradise and are moving here and we didn't have a lot of affordable rental apartments anyway. So hopefully these new funds will truly be a rescue for, for many families who are, who've been feeling that squeeze. Congress member Kathy Castor, what do you make of the thought of the, of the fact that not a single Republican in the house or in the Senate voted for the American rescue act? 
American Rescue Plan, that is? You know, Sean, there is a real difference in values. Uh, Republicans, again, just a couple of years ago, thought it was okay to add to the debt and deficit uh, for the wealthiest people in this country, millionaires and billionaires, and gave them massive tax cuts, gave tax cuts to corporations that weren't even asking for major tax cuts. Instead, Democrats, with President Biden's leadership, we know that when you invest in families, you provide a greater opportunity for people to succeed in life. And that's what we're aiming to do, lift everyone, especially working class folks and middle class people who have been hit hardest by COVID, especially communities of color. We think the child tax credit will be particularly helpful to African-American children, Latino children. And here in Tampa and in, in Hillsborough County, Florida, we can realize significant uh, improvement in the quality of life uh, for kids and families and that, that just weren't, weren't available when you're that's for the rich. Before I turn to other topics like gun safety bills, are there any other provisions of the American Rescue Plan that listeners should know about? Uh, the very significant investment in students and schools. There is a real issue here in Florida because the governor and the legislature refused to send down the emergency aid we provided in previous packages, the CARES Act and the other uh, emergency package at the end of the year. Meanwhile, Hillsborough County Schools, they, they say they want to lay off teachers in the middle of a pandemic and others, and this is the wrong time to be um, to be making drastic decisions. So in this, in the American Rescue Plan, we added a provision that said states, you have to send those emergency funds to students and schools uh, within 60 days. So um, I don't know, I'm, we may have to get a crowbar to get the other funds out of Tallahassee, but at least the American Rescue Plan will send those money to schools because we have a lot of work to do for uh, ch children in early learning and keeping all of our educators on the job as well. Our guest is Congress member Kathy Castor, and we're talking about the American Rescue Plan on WMNF's Midpoint Monday. I'm Sean Canan. It's 1242 in the afternoon. And switching gears now to other legislation, the U.S. House passed two bills on Thursday that one would require background checks on all firearm sales and transfers, and the other would allow an expanded 10-day review for gun purchases. Why did you support these bills? Well, Sean, I'm tired of, of endless gun violence on, on our streets. Uh, I'm, everyone's exhausted from... Uh, rampages, school shootings, shootings in movie theaters and churches. I mean, what is wrong? Part of what's wrong is we don't have just common sense uh, legislation that requires a simple background check to keep uh, firearms out of the hands of domestic abusers or terrorists or folks that um, may have mental health issues, you know, death by uh, suicide by gun is a real epidemic in America. So I was so pleased we could pass the bipartisan background checks bill. Again, uh, that will require no matter how you purchase a firearm, uh, modeled after many state laws, that um, you have to undergo that FBI background check. Uh, right now, here in our community, you could go to a gun show, you're not subjected to a background check unless you're a licensed dealer. You can buy a firearm over the internet, uh, that's, that's not illegal. So this would subject uh, all transfers of firearms, all purchases to a background check with a small exception for, for families and, and maybe if you're hunting with a neighbor. But we know the vast majority of Americans think this is reasonable and the gun manufacturers and uh, their the folks in the in the GOP have have blocked this for many years, and I'm hopeful we can get the U.S. Senate to take something up at least to pa pass the background checks bill. Let me turn to for a minute to your colleague, Congressmember Lucy McBath. Shortly after the House passed what she called life-saving legislation, McBath's son Jordan Davis was shot and killed at a gas station in Jacksonville. So here's what Congressmember Lucy McBath said shortly after HR 8 was passed. And all the times that I sat in committee hearings 
waiting for this legislation to pass and watching you time and time and time again put forth amendments that were shot down for this moment to be able to be here with you. Thank you for that. And as a mother, as a survivor, we thank you. There's so many of us survivors and family members that have lost our loved ones that have been waiting and waiting and waiting. And today we have the real possibility to make a difference and save lives. So I thank you on behalf of all the organizations, all the leaders, all of the frontline volunteers that have been championing for this moment. That's Lucy McBath, a Congress member who lost her son, Jordan Davis, when he was shot and killed at a gas station in Jacksonville. Um, and that was, she was speaking after the gun violence bills passed the US House. House. Congress member Kathy Castor, what do you think the chances are in the Senate for these bills? I, I think we have an opportunity and thanks to folks like Congresswoman Lucy McBath, who uh, actually you may not know, she represents a district outside Atlanta that used to be Newt Gingrich's uh, congressional, congressional district. So um, she has turned into a very important national voice, uh, unfortunately, because of the death of Jordan. I met her for the first time here in East Tampa, where the mothers uh, of the movement were, were traveling through with, um, she was here with Representative Diane Hart and others. And uh, I also, you have to reflect as well on the tragedy at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, because in addition to the bipartisan background checks bill, at the same time, we passed uh, Representative Jim Clyburn's bill that will close the Charleston loophole, because part of that horrendous tragedy was the fact that the shooter was able to get his firearm because uh, the current state of the law says if your background check doesn't go through in three days, you automatically get the weapon. And that's that's horrendous. That's not good. That's poor public policy. He he proceeded to go to uh, the church where he was invited in and they were praying and then massacred those those folks in Charleston. So these we need the public really to weigh in with Rubio and Rick Scott, don't leave, don't let them off the hook. They, they may oppose it, but don't make it easy for them by not allowing folks to hear from, from you. If you, if this matters to you, and I hope it does, I hope you'll weigh in with them and we'll push the Senate. I think the, the odds are, are 50, 50 that, that we get the filibuster uh, proof majority to bring it up for a vote. Our guest for the next few minutes is Congress member Kathy Castor. We're talking about uh, earlier about the American Rescue Plan, and we just finished talking about two major House bills that passed on, about gun violence. And uh, I want to ask you about the about Cuba policy. Early on in the Obama presidency, you were a leading advocate for relaxing U.S. restrictions on Cuba, and President Obama eventually came around to, to thawing relations with Cuba, including sitting next to Raul Castro at a Rays game in Havana. But many of those policies have been reversed under President Trump. Do you think Cuba policy will change now again under President Biden? I think that I think it will be modernized. There, there are a few front burner issues that have to change right away, and uh, many folks don't realize that Trump completely shut down the embassy in Cuba, which makes it very difficult to promote human rights and keep uh, eyes on what's happening in Cuba. So reopening the embassy will be very important. Keeping our diplomats safe. We still don't have good answers for. Uh, some of these health issues from diplomats in Havana and China and other uh, posts across the, the, the world. So he is, President Biden's committed to, to getting to the bottom of that. Families also have been subjected to uh, some very cruel policies by the Trump administration. It became practically impossible to visit your loved ones here in Florida through a non-immigrant visa because the embassy was closed. You were forced to pay fees and travel to Guyana uh, in the midst of COVID and try to get a, a visa. Many families paid those fees and the Trump administration just pocketed them uh, with, with no recourse. So I think starting fundamentally with support for families uh, coming out of COVID, support for small business owners, uh, 
restoring the embassy, getting some eyes on what's happening in Cuba when it comes to human rights. I think those will be pushed forward by the Biden administration uh, before we get to the larger issues of, of the embargo and other travel restrictions. Well, Representative Castro, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Midpoint today. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. And remember, my office is always available to help folks cut through red tape on any of those federal issues, immigration, the IRS, uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And please, everybody, go get vaccinated when it's your turn. We're going to vaccinate thousands and thousands of others this week. The Tampa Greyhound track, of course, is open to seven to seven, no appointment necessary. Seven days a week. All right. That's right. And Thanks Kathy, so much. Thank you so much. Kathy Castor is a member of Congress representing Tampa and surrounding areas. She's the chair of the United States House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. So what do you think about what you've heard so far this show? Give us a